So, in a time period where superhero movies finally get good movies with the origin stories in it, such as Batman Begins, they did it so well that now we get all kinds of origin story movies for like every character. We get Caesar Begins, we get Maleficent Begins, and now we have Dracula Begins. It's pretty much what it is. Dracula. Dracula Untold. I can't really compare this to any other Dracula movie there is because this is nothing like any other Dracula movie there is. This is a complete reboot slash reimagination. So Dracula Untold is about a character named Dracula who had this whole story before he became a vampire. And from what I'm used to, he's always been the first vampire, you know, the very first, and that's why he's the most powerful. But not in this case. So Dracula, whose real name is Vlad or Vlad, it starts off with a short intro about him growing up. They talk about how the Sultan took him when he was a kid because they needed a thousand boys so they can raise them to be soldiers to be great warriors kind of like 300 he became the most badass of badass warriors there is they nicknamed him the impaler because he impales people with all these spears he just kills so many people it's ridiculous once he retires he kind of wants to get away from that he just wants peace he's also a prince so he goes back to his old castle it's called castle dracula but his army is really small you know he doesn't go to war or anything like that he's made allies he's made peace negotiations but lad takes a few men up the mountain to find the turks it feels like they just went right into it. I'm not sure what was going on in the beginning. Like, I'm not sure if there was a battle, if they were being chased, or they were chasing them. They just kind of go right into it. They were tracking the Turks, and they climb up the mountain, assuming that they're in there. And then that's when Dracula sees the first vampire. I gotta admit, that scene was actually pretty creepy. They didn't show that much, but they showed just enough to have you be like, ooh, what's going on here? Dracula gets away, but his man gets killed. And as he goes back to his castle, he talks to his, I think it's his priest. I'm not really sure what he is. He tells him the legend of the vampire in like this book. So now Dracula is up to speed on this vampire. He gets married, has a son of his own, but after 10 years of peace the Sultan comes back, which is the Sultan's son. He does the same thing, he wants 1,000 boys to create his 300 warrior army. Despite the fact that he was friends, practically brothers, with Vlad, or Vlad, Dracula. Dracula tries to renegotiate, there is no negotiation here. It's either do this, or you're against me. So Dracula has no choice but to give up his son, and as he's giving it up, you know, he's hesitant, you know, he's been wanting peace for so long and he sees his wife how disturbed and terrified she is of giving up her son and she's th she even tells him, this is not why I'm with you, you said things would be different. So Dracula decides to be a badass and kill all the guys that were going to take his son. The guy who plays, I'm assuming, the consultant for Dracula, he tells him, you can't protect us forever, the Sultan will come back with the Turks and now they're probably going to retaliate by killing the entire castle because you decided to be a badass and kill all these men. And that's when Dracula remembers that vampire he saw up in the mountain. He's like, I'll find a way. And heads over to the mountain because he needs help, knowing that his army and any other negotiations is just not going to work. From the get-go all the way through the rest of the film, it's pretty much straightforward, which can be good but also can be bad. If you've seen the trailer, then you've seen most of this movie. There's nothing mysterious about this movie except for that vampire in the cave. Other than Dracula being the main character, I think that vampire, which is just known as the Master Vampire, I guess. The Master Vampire was probably the best part of the movie. That cave was dark and it was creepy, and uh, the vision of the vampire was just kind of like heat signature, so you can see it. Kind of like Predator. His face is all ugly as shit. The vampire decides to help Dracula only because if he helps him, then he will be free of his curse and get out of that cave. You scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. When Dracula wakes up as a vampire, it's kind of like Man of Steel status, where his powers just kick in, you know? He can hear things at a great distances. He got super strength. And he can turn to bats. I think they used the bats a little too much, maybe. They didn't overdo it, but they used it a little more than I would have liked. But the first scene, when he fights the army heading towards his castle in retaliation for him not giving up the thousand boys, it was awesome. I thought he was just gonna do what the trailer did, you know, turn to bats and just crush them all, but that's not what he did at first. Nah, he just walked right up and just killed everybody. That could have been my favorite scene, actually. So the rest of this movie is basically Dracula trying to take his people away from his castle, hide here, hide there, get away from the Turks. Trying to hide the fact that he's a vampire now, but also trying to, you know, deny this thirst he has. Because yes, he has the thirst now. The master vampire told him that the curse is, within three days, if you don't feed, you'll turn back to normal. But if you feed, that's it. You're a vampire forever. So Dracula sees his men eating chicken here. He sees blood there, so he's kind of like... So he's got to deny the thirst. He's even in church speaking to God. He's just like, give me the strength to, you know, go through with this these three days. No spoilers, but the end scenes were pretty good, actually. There was a lot more vampire action than I thought, so that's good. This movie was rated PG-13, so he didn't really see any blood when he stabbed somebody with a sword 
or you know all kinds of stuff like that but surprisingly there's a lot more blood than i thought there'd be of course the blood that he drinks blood here there's blood there eh, a decent amount of blood let's talk about the characters luke evans as dracula was pretty good but the thing is he's not that classic dracula where he's already this vampire who just you know seduces people and kills them you can't compare him to bella lugosky dracula or even gary oldman dracula i'm not even gonna go that far with Gerald butler dracula 2000 even the Dracula from Van Housing, the Hugh Jackman movie, even he was better than Gerard Butler. Whenever he was supposed to be funny, he cracked me up. Or the Dracula that was in Blade 3 because that wasn't a Dracula movie, he was just kind of like a cameo slash guest star or whatever. Anyways, Luke Evans as Dracula, he didn't really seem Dracula until the end of the movie. But that's fine because that's what this movie's about, it's Dracula Begins, you know? Dracula Untold. So only by the end of the movie does he seem kind of like a villain. But, I don't know. There's Dracula's wife. To be honest, I can't really remember her name, and when I looked it up, I can't really pronounce it right, so I don't want to say it wrong. So I'm just going to say her real name, Seregadon. She did pretty good. She was a loving wife and a loving mother. She supported him all the way, whether he was the prince or a vampire. She didn't give a shit. Dracula's son, he was okay. I got no complaints. He didn't do anything to piss me off. He also supported his father, whether he was the prince or a vampire. And then the worst part of the movie, Dominic Cooper. He was single-handedly the worst part of the movie. Not because I don't like the actor, but because... He was generic as fuck. I like movies with great villains, you know, just a badass who doesn't go sloppy, doesn't go, you know, oh, uh, I'm gonna change my mind just because of this. No, I want a badass who says this and does it. But also someone who can prove the hero wrong. Like you think you're doing right? What the hell for? Do you even realize what's going on in this world? This guy was just like, oh, I need a thousand boys and I need them now. Oh, you don't want to give them up? Okay, I'm just gonna kill you and your castle. Even by the last showdown, he was still generic. I was just like, ah, this guy is kind of killing me right now. But the master vampire, played by Charles Dance, he was pretty good. Possibly the best part of the movie. He was creepy, he's got the accent, he's got the look. He was the only mysterious part of this movie. You know, I noticed that Dracula had a brief vision. It had like random scenes of like the future. Random clips that had nothing to do with the movie. And I could have sworn I saw a Little Red Riding Hood in there. I'm not really sure, because my two friends who saw it, they didn't catch it. I'm not sure why. Oh well. This movie directed by Gary Shore, I have no idea who that is, but from what I hear and do the research, he hasn't done much. This movie's straightforward, not the best, but not the worst either. On my own personal scale of 1 through 10, 5 being average, I'm gonna give this movie a 6. Dracula Untold gets a 6. Above average, but not that great. Could have been way worse, but also could have been better. Anyways, what do you guys think? Are you gonna go watch this movie? Are you interested at all? Or are you just like, eh, whatever, I don't care. If he's not biting people, I don't give a shit. Or are you like, before he was a vampire? Huh, this could be interesting. Whatever it is, just comment below and let's talk about this, guys. I'm curious about your thoughts. Anyways, that was it for this review, and I hope to see you in the next video. Alright guys, see you next time. Am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording. <laughs>